I want to talk to you tonight about environment. Everybody say environment. The environment is the world and the atmosphere that is around us. Amen. I don't have a scripture text tonight. I'm just going to start talking to you what I feel like the Lord has placed on my heart. Before I get really deep into this, also let's remember the baby clothes drive. Amen. Y'all remember what date that is? April 1st. It's from 8.30 to 1.30. And so we're going to have a baby. Uh, there was a, a, a entity that donated some baby clothes to us. And Sister Pam has been working hard with that. And several other ladies have been working. And so let's remember that. Keep them in your prayer. And we're going to be passing out baby clothes. And um, we're going to be passing out flyers. Inviting people to our Easter service. And I'm just praying that God does something great with that. Amen. Last Sunday of the month is coming up upon us. Amen. So just Sunday morning only, no Sunday night. Hallelujah. Everybody say environment. Does anybody know how many forms water can take on? Oh, you got it, Brother Brian. You know what it is? Hey, good job, brother. Water has three different forms. It's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. All of Sister McCarthy's kids are very smart. You have a dentist, a future lawyer, and a future executive of Beasley Tire. Water can take on three different forms, solid, liquid, or gas. Now... Low temperatures, high pressure. Everybody say low temperatures and high pressure. That's an uncomfortable situation. Really cold, high pressure. Nobody likes to be there. And that's uncomfortable. But that makes water a solid. Everybody say solid. Higher temperatures, low pressure. So more comfortable temperatures, low pressure, more comfort. Water becomes a vapor. And when all is normal, everybody say normal, water is just water. So water can take on three different forms. And this is a true statement. The environment that surrounds the water will dictate what the water becomes. The hot sun will affect it. The cold weather will affect it. It's impossible to not be affected by the environment that you live in. It's impossible for us not to be affected by the environment that we choose to live in. For us to say, that doesn't affect me. And I don't know who I'm preaching to here or not. Maybe it's myself. But I'm just giving you what God has given me. Line by line, detail by detail. For us to say that doesn't affect me is like water saying you can put me in a freezer, but it won't change me. The environment will change you. Let me give you an example, and um, I'm going to use Adeline in this example, but this is going to be a good example because um, several years ago we started letting her have just a few minutes per day of little videos, kids YouTube, different things like that, and we were monitoring it pretty heavily and so we let her have a little bit each day and uh, that's for her and uh, her mother and I's peace and sanity but we started noticing her starting to whine a lot and that wasn't really like her and she would come up to us and be like are y'all gonna leave me are y'all gonna like drop me off and leave me somewhere and we'd be like no why would you even say that to us and we didn't understand where these questions was coming from and these whining until we started listening to what she was watching. And literally people have kid YouTube videos where they get two dolls and they go, Hey, Oh, Priscilla, don't you take my shoes. Oh, I'm going to go take a bath. Oh, don't you go. And literally they're fighting the whole time and these kids are just glued into it. And so she started mimicking or 
acting out what she was watching because it was influencing her. And then we were overhearing a video and there was this video of this dad that was playing with his kids and he would drop them off somewhere and then go hide and they were playing like hide and seek. And that's why Adeline was like, y'all aren't going to leave me anywhere, are you? And so we transitioned her from Kids YouTube to Yippie, which is Christian-based, and it's full of Bible stories. And immediately, her attitude changed. She quit whining. She quit asking us about if we were going to leave her or not. And she started telling us about David and Goliath. She started telling us about Elijah and Elisha. She would come up. I'm telling you, the environment will have an effect on us. King Solomon was known for his wisdom and wealth, and he married many foreign wives who worshipped other gods. And as a result, he began to worship those gods as well. This led to his downfall and eventual, and eventually the division of the kingdom of Israel. In 1 Kings 11.4 it says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart After other gods. Everybody say, that will affect me. He was the king of Israel. But his wives, his foreign wives who worshipped other gods, eventually had an effect on the most wisest man in all the world. Amen? Can I have just a little bit less, little less monitor up here? It's a little bit loud. Sorry, Bishop. It's hurting my ears just a little bit. The moment, this is a very true statement right here. The moment you and I leave the presence of God, we start changing. I do not care how spiritual you are. I do not care if you're here every service. I do not care if you're in complete obedience with God and His Word. The moment you and I leave His presence, we start changing. The same can be said, that's perfect, Brother Jacob. The same can be said with the groceries that we buy in the frozen section. The moment it leaves that cold environment and enters that normal environment, there's a change that starts to happen. And for you to keep it the way you found it, you must get it back to the same environment as quick as you can, which is the freezer. That's the reason why I need church. Because the moment I leave, I start changing. And to preserve, I have to get back to this place as quick as I can. What the freezer is to the frozen goods. The church is to the child of God. When we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were known for their wickedness and immorality. The environment of these cities was so corrupt that God destroyed them with fire and brimstone. Egypt, amen, was a place that Israel was enslaved in. And the harsh environment of their captivity made their lives miserable. They were forced to work long hours in difficult conditions. And they were treated cruelly by their Egyptian masters. In Babylon, the children of Israel were taken into captivity where they were forced to live in a foreign land and adapt a new culture. The environment of their Amen. Culture was not conducive to their faith and values and they struggled to maintain their identity as God's chosen people. The wilderness after leaving Egypt, the Israelites wondered. For 40 years, the harsh environment of the desert was a constant challenge for them. And they often complained and grumbled against God and Moses. I'm talking about environment and atmosphere tonight. If environment... Atmosphere and location aren't important. Then go home and get everything out of your freezer. The steaks, all the ice cream, the hamburger meat, and set it on the porch. Let it sit there for a week or two. And then when it's time that you're really craving that home-cooked steak... Go out on your porch, get the steak, put it on the grill, and eat it. If environment doesn't matter, take the milk out of the fridge. Take the eggs out of the fridge and just set it outside. Will it taste the same just because it's a steak? No. Why? Because the steak is only as good 
as the environment it's preserved in. All you have to do is set a stake out in normal temperatures for two hours. And bacteria will start to grow in it. It could have been preserved for the last six months in the freezer. But if I take it out of the right atmosphere. And I place it in the wrong atmosphere. There's a change that will greatly impact how that steak is used. People say I don't believe in church. But I know Jesus loves me and I love Jesus. And I know he's going to take care of me. I know I'm a child of God and they go to the bar. I'm talking about this tonight because God is, is making me talk about this. They talk about Jesus, but yet they go to the bars. They go to the clubs. They go to the parties. Looking at inappropriate stuff. Listening to inappropriate stuff. Hear this next statement. You, where you are. Everybody say where I am. Is more important than what you are. You can be the greatest steak in all the world, but you still need a freezer. I can be the greatest pastor in all the world, whatever that means. But I still need a church, and I still need a church body and family. You can have all the potential in the world, but you still need the right atmosphere. I'm telling you what God is wanting to talk to somebody about tonight is the environment that you're choosing to live in. Every person of God should see the value of a godly atmosphere. What are godly atmospheres? I didn't get this off the internet. I wrote this all down when God was dealing with me about it last night. So I am reading it, but I'm reading it and preaching it. What are godly atmospheres? Any place where God and truth are the center of attention and His name and word are being prayed to, listened to, and worshipped. That is godly atmospheres. No child of God should feel comfortable in an atmosphere where there are people drinking, smoking, cursing, listening to ungodly music, where there is ungodly fun going on of any sort. That should make you feel uncomfortable. You know why? Because that is not an atmosphere that will preserve you. That's an atmosphere that will spoil you. You're only as good as the atmosphere that you choose to live in. And that's what God is wanting me to address tonight in all of our lives. Amen. You can have the greatest promises, the greatest words, the greatest blessings. But if you remove yourself from that godly atmosphere. And you place yourself in the normal environment. You'll go back to what you used to be. If you place yourself in a comfortable environment, you will turn to vapor. Several years ago, I was on a work trip. I don't know why I'm talking about this tonight, but I'm going to hone in a lot on alcohol again and drinking. But, I was on a work trip, and they sent me to finance school. This was in 2014, and... I just got a promotion and they sent me to Dallas or Houston or someplace to, we went to this finance school and we was in there with a bunch of other different people and I got there and I began to make friends with different guys and they were like, hey man, would you like to go out with us tonight? And I'm like, nope. Nah man, come on, come to the bar with us, we're going to have a good time. Nope. Nope. Can, Brother Rankin, can you go and not drink? And yes, I do preach against drinking alcohol. Don't talk to me about how much you love God if you're going to go home and drink alcohol. Well, Brother Rankin, did they do this or that? I don't care what anybody does. I'm saying if you're going to love God and serve God, you might have to take some vows that says, God, I'm not going to pick up something that's going to cause me to be delusional. That's going to cause me to not think right and to not act right. I don't care if there's other people that endorse drinking wine. I'm saying don't drink and wine. I say don't drink wine. I hope this is okay tonight, but I've, I'm feeling bold against alcohol right now. 
I, I'm serious. I'm feeling bold against environments where there is ungodliness going on and there's cursing going on and there's drinking going on and there's all this ungodly junk. It is. The greatest environment in all the world that you will find is inside of the house of God. It's inside of a prayer room. I'm talking about something that will preserve you. My God. I don't care how spiritual you are. If the packaging ain't sealed right. You will not be preserved. And God wants us to look at our spirits the same way we look at those steaks we pay too much for at the meat market. That ice cream and those things that we go home and we put in a place to preserve. Amen? But I, I told him, I said, no, I, I'm not. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I, mean, I was in the hotel the other night. This is a great story. This is a great story for this time. Thank you, God, for giving me this. But we're staying in a hotel right now. We're getting some things, some plumbing issues on the house fix and everything. And we, different things. And so, uh. Last, the other night, I, I went down to the front, and Adeline, they wanted some snacks and all this stuff, and we got some snacks, and there was two workers behind the, the counter there, and I said, just add this to my room, and, and uh, it, I had a big old honey bun, and one of the workers said, uh, you know what would make that better? If you had that with some liquor. And the other person said, hush, he's a Pastor. No, liquor don't make nothing better. I said alcohol don't make nothing better. It makes it worse. I'm feeling, I'm feeling mad towards alcohol right now. Is this all right, Sister Kite? Yes. We, uh, well, Brother Rankin, that's tough preaching. Yeah, but it'll save your soul. Do you want low temperatures and high pressure? Because that'll make you solid. Or do you want comfortable? Oh, I felt the Holy Ghost right there. I'm having to watch myself right now because I don't want to say something I'm going to regret. But we had Christmas parties at Tipton. All Christian people, get on with that Christian junk when you want to party and drink alcohol. Go, go, get on with that. Or Brother Rankin, you're looking down on other people. No, I'm saying you're either in a position of being preserved or you're not. Don't tell me that steak is good when it's been sitting on your porch for the last three weeks. Because I ain't eating it. Well, it's still a steak. Yeah, but has it been preserved? And they hand out little tickets for everybody to start drinking at the end of the party. Me and my wife, we got up and left. We did. We left. We, we were there for the awards and the meal. But when they started all that drinking mess, we got out of there. You know why? Because if you're full of the Spirit of God, you're not going to find comfort. You're not going to find peace in the middle of a party atmosphere where people are drinking, where people are cursing, and there's foul language, and there's all kind of dirty jokes going on. You're not going to feel comfortable. Why they feel uncomfortable in this atmosphere is because they're used to not being preserved. And then when all of a sudden the presence of God starts getting on them, they're like, man, what is that? All of a sudden it starts changing them. When Jesus was there, Peter was ready to die for him. What God is wanting us to recognize here tonight is the impact that his presence has on our lives. Look at this. When Peter was there with Jesus, he was ready to die for him. But when Jesus leaves, Peter denies him just like that. I'm talking about atmosphere. I'm saying you'll do things at home away from the house of God that you won't do in the house of God. So if you have that issue, just come live in the house of God. Whatever it takes to get you to heaven.
We'll rent out a room. I got plenty of space over here. I'm saying I want you going to heaven. I'm saying the atmosphere matters. The environment matters. Judas, when he was with Jesus, he was just another disciple. But when he's away from Jesus, he makes a deal to betray him. The influence that the immediate presence of God has on our lives. It changes how we talk. It changes how we think, how we act, the decisions that we make. When we are in His presence, when you have had a tough and trying week, that's when you need the influence of the presence of God, which is church. You may not feel like it, and I can understand and relate because there's times I don't feel like it. But the impact that His presence will have on who I am and what I am to become. All these other situations in our life, they turn me into what I don't want to be. Can anybody testify to that? There's situations in our life that when it's immediate acting on us, it turns us into what I do not want to be. But when I'm in his presence, there is a fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And that positive, godly environment will have a positive effect on my mind, my heart, and my spirit. That's why the psalmist said, take not thy presence from me. When I'm away from His presence, it's easy to do those things I will later regret. Everybody say environment. Say it again. Say it again. It matters. I said the environment matters. In the hotel room, a block of soap was left in the water when God gave me this message last night. And what was solid before... What was able to be used to clean and cleanse before, because it was left in the wrong environment too long, it became soft. And when I tried to pick it up, it fell apart in my hand. The reason why God puts you and I in uncomfortable situations, some high pressure conditions, He's trying to make you a solid saint. When you take water and you put it in high pressure situations, it turns into a solid. When God puts me and you in high pressure situations and uncomfortable temperatures, He's trying to make you a solid saint. When water is in low temperature and high pressure, it becomes a solid. It doesn't evaporate. It doesn't stay what it's always been, which is water. I know it may be tough to get here at times for prayer, but look at the impact a prayer meeting can have on you, your family. It can make you into a solid saint, a solid prayer warrior, a solid giver, a solid lover, a solid brother and sister. I want to be a solid saint. I want to be a solid pastor, a solid father, a solid child of God. We have to understand this. God cannot build anything off of water or vapor. Just like you and I can't. But He can build off of something that is solid. You're either a vapor saint where you're just evaporating and we hardly ever see you. You're either a water saint where you just want comfort, low pressure, and you just stay what you have always been. Or you are a solid state. One that God can build upon. One that the church can count upon. One, my, 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 hear me right now. I don't know about you, but I don't want things in my life that could cause me to evaporate. That could cause me to go back to what God called me from. I want to be solid for the kingdom of God. I want to be somebody that God can count on. Be a young person that your youth pastor can count on you. Be a saint that your pastor can count on you. Don't make us wonder if you're going to come or not. Don't make us wonder if you're going to give or not. Don't make us wonder if you're going to be okay or not. Say, you know what? I'm going to let the environment of the church make me into a solid saint, a solid husband, a solid man of God, and a solid lady of God. You want to know what God is looking for? He's looking for solid saints. God is looking for Joseph, Daniels, and Ruth. But it's only going to be dependent on the environment that you're willing to live in. Oh God, help me to stay in your presence. Let's stand right now all over the house. Can I tell you something right now? You may not have the ability to do it on your own. But what you cannot do. 
the presence of God will do for you. That environment will create you into what God has called you to be. It's important the environment that we let our children grow up in. It's important the environment that we let ourselves be lost in. Amen. God has dealt with me about this so much. There's so much promise in all of our lives. And I speak for every one of us. Even in my life, if I make the right decisions and I act right, I know that the blessings of God will come. Sure, there will be valleys. Sure, there will be times of trouble. Sure. But I will only become what God has called me to be if I stay in the right place. And that's in His presence. That's around the people of God. And just like tonight, I don't care what you're facing out there. You can come into His presence. And you say, alright God, make me into that solid saint. As we lift our hands right now, pray over yourself. Entertain His presence. God, if there's some areas in my life that is trying to change me into vapor, is trying to change me into liquid, God, I want you to remake me solidify me God make me solid make me usable make me something that you can build on Jesus I gotta be solid for your kingdom I gotta be solid I don't, I'm tired of being a amen liquid I'm tired of being vapor where situations just make me go every direction no God I'm gonna be solid I'm going to be solid. I'm going to stay in the right atmosphere. I'm going to stay in the right atmosphere. And I'm going to let that presence make me into a solid servant. A solid child of God. Hallelujah. Do you want to talk to him just for a few minutes? It's only 825. Is there some areas in your life that, amen, that are not solid? Are there some areas in your life that are, amen, questionable, that, amen, you're not doing what you need to do in every area? Let God make you a solid giver. Let God make you a solid prayer warrior. Let God make you a solid servant. Let Him make you a solid child of God. One that can be counted on. One that can be built off of. One that can be used for the benefit of God's kingdom. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If it's appropriate, pray with somebody just for a few moments. Hallelujah. God, I want to be solid. I want to be solid. God, I want to be solid. I want to be consistent. God, areas in my life that are not solid, that are lacking. Regardless of the reason, you got to be in the right environment. I said regardless of the reason, you got to be in the right environment. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. God, don't let us be changed by our environment for the worse. Let us be changed for the good. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want to be solid for you. I want to be solid for you, Jesus. I want to be solid. Come on, let God make you a solid saint. God, every time the doors are open outside of work and sickness, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be solid. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be somebody that you can build on, God. Amen. I'm not going to become liquid or vapor. I'm going to be solid. I'm going to be something that can be used in your kingdom. Hallelujah. It's all about the environment. Are you willing to stay in the presence of God? Or are you going to go out? Are you going to go out? Are you going to get with the wrong crowd? Are you going to get with the wrong group? Are you going to let the wrong things influence you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I want to be what you've called us to be. I got to stay in your presence. I got to stay in your presence, God. Help us to stay in your presence, Jesus. Help us to stay in your presence, Jesus.
God is doing some things right now in some of your spirits and some of your hearts. You've been questioning the uncomfortable situation. You have been questioning the high pressure. And God sent me to tell you that He is making you a solid person in the kingdom of God. That high pressure, those uncomfortable situations, He's making you into something that He can build off of. Thank Him for those uncomfortable. Thank Him for those high pressure. Thank Him for that chaos. Because I'm telling you, He's going to make you solid through it. Oh, I know we would rather have normal. I know we would rather have comfortable. Oh, but I want to be solid. I want to be solid. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Seems like it right now, but he's still faithful. May not look like it right now, but he's still good. It may not seem like victory, but oh, just wait and see what he's gonna do. Watch what he's gonna do. His glory is the same here in wilderness as it is on any mountain top where I have been so in spite of what I'm facing now my soul will sing hallelujah he's still there Though right now there's not much beauty in these ashes Making something out of nothing is what he does He just speaks and miracles begin to happen And the story that he writes can't be his glory is the same here in the wilderness as it is on any mountain top where I have been so in spite of what I'm facing now my soul will sing Hallelujah, He's still everything. No hard place will ever silence my praise. Cause it's right here where He makes His glory shine the brightest. No hard place will ever silence my praise cause it's right here where he makes his glory shine the brightest his glory is the same here in the wilderness as it is on any mountain top where I have been so in spite of what I'm facing now, my soul will sing. Hallelujah, He's still everything. Several months ago, I did a funeral. Later, I was at a place and a lady that I knew and grew up with, she came and she said, I felt like God sent 
me here for you to pray with me and for me. I asked her family what was going on. She said she's drinking a bottle of wine a night. I don't know why I'm still on this, but let me just tell you. Drinking wine. Drinking, 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 drinking. Drinking, drinking, drinking. Still not filling the void. Still not replacing the hurt. She comes to where I am. I need you to pray for me. My life's in turmoil. My life's in shambles. Can I tell you what you turn to when you're hurt? If you turn to anything else besides the house of God, it will never get better. It can only mask. It can only put off. But I said the presence of God will make it better. I was talking to a young man today, pastor's son, born in this, raised in this. He said, I want you to send me some scriptures on tithing. I still believe it, but I have some questions. I said, that's not the question. He said, sir, I said, that's not the question. I said, will you let me minister to you right now? I said, because I've been feeling a spirit on you for several months. He said, yes, sir, you can minister to me. I said, you're not living for God, are you? He said, no, sir, I'm not living for God. I said, that's the problem. I said, my next question is, why are you not living for God? I said, when you allow these things to come in your life, the things of God to the carnal man are foolishness. So you start questioning those things. And I said, the answer is not tithing. I said, that's just what you're taking issue with because you're not living for God. I said, hear me. I said, hear me. I know where you've been. Church hurt. Church did the, his dad wrong, pastor. Just bitterness and hurt. I said, you can allow those things to cause you to throw all of this to the wind and you'll lose your soul. Or you can say, the high pressure and the uncomfortable situation is meant to make me into something more solid that God can build on. I said there's four things you got to have to be to weather every storm. I'm almost done here, but this is the last thing. I said there's four things that's got to be consistent in your life to weather every storm. I said you got to consistently pray. You got to consistently come to church and read your Bible. So that's three. And you got to consistently give. Pray, reading your Bible, coming to church and give. I said, out of the four, what is the only two things that are consistent in your life right now? He said, I go to church and I give. That's the only two that are consistent. I said, look. I said, now you're starting to question giving. I said, so out of the four, all you got is coming to church. I said, how long before you quit going to church? I said, the question of the other two, those got to stay tight. I said, you got to get back to prayer, that environment. Church, can I tell you, it may be just five minutes in the home. But can I tell you, when the, that presence of God overshadows you, it may be a Monday night, it may be a, a, a Tuesday or a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday. When you kneel down and you say, God, all of these things are coming at me. I need you to create and change my environment right now. And you begin to cry out to God and you begin to pr pray. I'm telling you, that immediate presence of God that shows up has a great impact on who you are and what you are to become. Every time you open up the Bible in your home, that immediate impact of that word, you know what it's doing? It's making you solid. It's making you solid. I've been living this. I've been, I've been raised in this. Bishop has preached and taught this. I'm not, I'm not, I will never I will never say it's another way. You got to consistently come to church. You have to consistently give. You have to consistently pray. You have to consistently read your word. If those four things are not consistent, I don't know. But I'm telling you, all of us here tonight has the power to make those things that are not consistent, consistent. We can put ourselves in the freezer and say, God, I want you to freeze out all the impurities in my life. I want you to freeze out all the disgust and the bacteria that's trying to grow in my life. Amen. God, I thank you for your word tonight. 
I pray for every single person in this house and those that are watching online. I pray right now, God, that this word would touch them. God, if there are things in their life that are trying to make them into something else that you didn't call them to be or you didn't have for them, I pray that your presence would overshadow them and that you would make them into what you want them to be, Jesus. Do that for all of us, God. Let us be more concerned about your presence than we are about anything else in our life, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him another good hand clap of praise right now. I love each and every one of you. If this is hard preaching, I'm sorry. But every once in a while, we got to hear it. I love you. Come on, if you're going to get chocolate chip cookies, you got to put the chocolate chips in there. You move, remove the chocolate chips, you got a sugar cookie. It takes all the ingredients to be apostolic. Come on, I want to be apostolic. I want to be solid. I want to be consistent. I want to be somebody that God can build on. I almost made sugar cookies tonight. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Sister Alma and the music team for everything. Sister Cott, I'm so happy about your good report. You know what that means? Maybe God will let us all live another hundred years together here. Amen. I want to say, y'all seem like y'all are doing great. And I'm believing it. Amen. Somebody asked me today, how's brother and sister Cott? I said, they are great. I'm like, brother Cott feels like he's got so much strength, he might preach a revival for me. Amen. I love you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.